I think we're having trouble hearing you, so just one moment. Yeah, we're, uh, we're having trouble with our microphone right now. Um, if, you can, uh, if you can go over to this microphone just over here, I'm so sorry. <laughs> here we go. Live radio in the studio. Here. Do we have you? Do we have you now? Yes. Okay. So, what is Cambridge Analytica? So, Cambridge Analytica is um, a firm founded by Robert Mercer, who is the billionaire hedge fund uh, conservative donor, Steve Bannon, his and Mercer's daughter Rebecca. And their conceit was that we're going to use big data to map the personality of every voter, and through this kind of personality assessment, be able to predict their behavior and be able to message that message at them, like figure out who's neurotic and fearful, who's open-minded, who loves the occult, and, and we'll be able to kind of reshape American culture and reshape American political culture with this really powerful new data science. Uh, you call what, what happened a huge data breach? Can you explain? Look, they, they, Cambridge Analytica was able to harvest using Cambridge, um, using Cambridge, Cambridge University Academic. They were able to harvest about 50 million profiles uh, off Facebook. That information was supposed to be for academic use only. It ended up in a private data firm run by a conservative billionaire. So basically, a bunch of data went from one place it was supposed to be to another place it wasn't without the consent of the people who put it there. All right, you and other news organizations got a lot of this new information from a leaker. Uh, his name is Chris Wiley. He helped found Cambridge Analytica. Uh, the UK's Channel 4 interviewed him, and he says what Cambridge Analytica did was basically weaponize your Facebook page. Let's listen. So whenever you go and you like something, you are giving me a clue as to who you are as a person. And so all of this can be captured very easily and run through an algorithm that learns who you are. When you go to work, right, your coworkers only see one side of you, your friends only see one side of you, but a computer sees all kinds of sides of you. And so we can get better than human level accuracy at predicting your behavior. So, so how did this group actually use this information on American voters? They were building psychographic profiles. You know, I think it's important to keep in mind that this is a new field, both in academia and in marketing and messaging, and that uh, Chris is a true believer in it. Um, there were a lot of people who said this didn't work as well. Now, that this was an early iteration that hadn't quite nailed it. But the basic idea is mostly is the idea that we can figure out who you are as a person, and then we can tailor messages that will scare you or inspire you. And that we can do this largely through your Facebook likes. If you have like 50 Facebook likes, we got you. Um, it, it's remarkably simple. I think, you know, there is there is that fear right now that people are putting information online and it will be used in ways they don't understand to try and manipulate them. And, and that is, in, in essence, what they wanted to do. Uh, and of course, um, Cambridge Analytica, as you mentioned, was involved in helping President Donald Trump get elected. Uh, I want to play a little bit more widely speaking to Channel 4 about how specifically Steve Bannon, who was Trump's uh, chief, chief strategist, wanted to use this technology. Steve wanted weapons for culture war. That's what he wanted. We offered him a way to accomplish what he wanted to do, which was change the culture of America. Uh, change the culture of America, that seems like a big remit. Uh, did it change people's minds? Is there any evidence you say that we really don't know? It, it, it's not inclusive. Um, you know, there are a lot of people around the Trump campaign, so they didn't do that much, and what they did wasn't that great. Uh, it's, it's, the Cambridge Analytica's track record is, is very uncertain, and whether it will have any major clients in the coming election cycles is really, really deeply uncertain right now. Uh, you know, I think everybody has to remember this is a really, really young field, and that if this is going to develop in May, um, it's going to be a while. Uh, how does what you uncovered link to Robert Mueller's investigation into election interference? So we know that, that Mueller has, has asked Cambridge Analytica for all the documents and emails related to its work in the Trump campaign. Um, what exactly they're investigating is hard to say. Uh, you know, the Mueller investigation is this black box. Mm. Uh, they, don't, they don't talk. And, you know, in, in our work, we also found a number of kind of odd, almost unexplained connections to Russia. They, they, Luke Oil, which is a Russian oil company that's pretty tight with, with some of Putin's inner circle, they kind of showed up in the summer of 2014 and were like, hey, we're talking about American voter data, um, which is odd. Because they're, they're in oil company. Why would they be interested in that? They have like one, two gas stations in the U.S. and they're one in Georgetown, actually. Um, so it was kind of strange what they wanted out of the U.S. And, and so, you know, where Mueller's going with this, you know. Matthew Rosenberg from the New York Times, thank you so very much.